The hot summer air enveloped Lauren Spira as she stepped out of her off-campus apartment and into the night. She had spent the day studying for her finals, and now it was time to let loose and have some fun. It was a Friday night, and Lauren and her friends had plans to go out to Kilroy's Sports Bar, one of the most popular spots in Bloomington. Lauren was dressed to impress, wearing a cute top, denim shorts, and sandals. Her blonde hair was styled in loose waves, and her makeup was flawless. She felt confident and ready to take on the night. When Lauren arrived at Kilroy's, the bar was already bustling with people. She immediately spotted her friends and made her way over to them. They hugged and chatted excitedly about the night ahead. Lauren was known for her outgoing personality, and she quickly struck up conversations with strangers at the bar. The drinks flowed freely, and Lauren found herself drinking more than she usually did. Her behavior became erratic, and she was seen arguing with one of her friends. Witnesses later reported that Lauren was upset about something but wouldn't say what. As the night wore on, Lauren's friends grew increasingly concerned about her. She was stumbling and slurring her words, and her eyes were glassy. Her friends tried to persuade her to leave the bar, but she was adamant about staying. At around 2.30 a.m., Lauren was seen leaving Kilroy's alone. She had told her friends that she was going back to her apartment, but she never made it there. Surveillance footage from nearby businesses captured Lauren walking alone down the street, seemingly in good spirits. But what happened next remains a mystery. Lauren's friends reported her missing the next day when she failed to show up for an exam. The Bloomington Police Department launched an investigation, and the search for Lauren began. The night of June 2nd would forever change the lives of Lauren's loved ones. They would spend the next several years searching for answers and holding out hope that she would be found alive. But as time passed without any leads, their worst fears began to come true. Lauren Spear had vanished without a trace. Lauren's friends woke up on the morning of June 3rd to find that she had not returned to her apartment. They immediately became worried and began calling her phone, but there was no answer. As the day went on, they tried to retrace her steps from the previous night, but no one had seen her after she left Kilroy's sports bar. By the evening of June 3rd, Lauren's friends had called the police and reported her missing. The Bloomington Police Department began a search for Lauren, and her family and friends were interviewed. They provided information about her routine and habits, as well as any potential enemies or people who may have had a motive to harm her. As the days went on, the search for Lauren intensified. Her photo was circulated on social media and the news, and flyers were posted around the city. Volunteers came out in droves to help search for her, combing through the streets and wooded areas near Kilroy's and Indiana University. The police used dogs, helicopters, and sonar equipment to try and locate her, but no trace of Lauren was found. The media became involved, and Lauren's story quickly received national attention. The disappearance of the young and popular Indiana University student was a shocking and devastating event that captured the nation's attention. News outlets broadcasted updates on the search, and her family and friends made pleas for her safe return. Despite the intense search efforts and media coverage, Lauren's whereabouts remained a mystery. The police continued to investigate leads and follow up on tips, but no significant progress was made in the case. 
Lauren's family and friends remained hopeful that she would be found alive. But as the days turned into weeks, their hope began to wane. The search for Lauren Spearer had only just begun, but the uncertainty and fear surrounding her disappearance were palpable. The city of Bloomington was gripped by the tragedy, and the question of what happened to Lauren would linger for years to come. The investigation into Lauren's disappearance was a top priority for the Bloomington Police Department. The search for Lauren was expanding by the minute, and the police were working around the clock to find her. They started by interviewing her friends and family, trying to get any information they could about Lauren's whereabouts. They learned that Lauren had been out drinking with her friends on the night she disappeared and that she had left Kilroy's sports bar around 2.30 a.m. Her friends had last seen her walking towards her apartment complex, which was only a few blocks away. The police began questioning the people who were with Lauren that night, including her boyfriend and several male acquaintances. They also conducted searches of their homes and vehicles, looking for any clues that might lead them to Lauren. But the searches turned up nothing of significance. The police began to focus on the surveillance footage from the night Lauren disappeared. They reviewed hours of footage from the bar and the surrounding area. They were able to identify Lauren walking away from Kilroy's sports bar alone but the footage did not provide any leads. The investigation was further complicated by inconsistent witness statements. Some witnesses reported seeing Lauren with a group of men, while others claimed she was alone. The police were having a hard time putting together a clear timeline of the night's events. Despite the lack of evidence, the police were determined to find Lauren. They continued to search the surrounding areas and questioned anyone who might have information about her disappearance. They also turned to the public for help, urging anyone with information to come forward. The media picked up on Lauren's story, and it quickly became national news. The Spira family made several public appeals for information, and posters with Lauren's picture were plastered all over Bloomington and the surrounding areas. As the days turned into weeks, the police were no closer to finding Lauren. The investigation seemed to have hit a dead end, and the Spira family was left with more questions than answers. Would they ever find out what happened to Lauren? The Spira family is anguish grows with each passing day that their daughter remains missing. Charlene and Robert Spira, Lauren's parents, refuse to give up the search for their daughter, despite the lack of progress made by the police. They refuse to believe that Lauren simply vanished without a trace. In addition to hiring a private investigator, the Spires launched their own search efforts. They create flyers with Lauren's picture and distribute them throughout the Bloomington area. They set up a website and a Facebook page dedicated to finding Lauren, and they receive an outpouring of support from people around the country. The Spee Race also speak out in the media, pleading for anyone with information to come forward. They do interviews with local and national news outlets, and they appear on talk shows to raise awareness about Lauren's disappearance. They offer reward for any information that led to finding Lauren, and they hope that the promise of money will incentivize someone to come forward. Charlene and Robert also travel to Bloomington to participate in the search for their daughter. They meet with the police and the private investigator, and they coordinate with search and rescue teams to comb the surrounding areas for any sign of Lauren. They organize search parties with volunteers and spend hours scouring pots, woods, and other remote areas. 
Despite their tireless efforts, the Spee Race are unable to find any clues that might lead to Lauren's whereabouts. As the weeks turn into months, they become increasingly frustrated with the lack of progress in the investigation. They are determined to keep searching, however, and they refuse to give up hope that they will one day find their beloved daughter. The search for Lauren Spear continued for weeks with no solid leads. False reports and rumors flooded the media and social media, which made it difficult for investigators to separate fact from fiction. The Spear family and Lauren's friends remained optimistic, but struggled to cope with the constant disappointments. A possible break in the case occurred when a woman was seen walking with a group of men near the location where Lauren was last seen. However, the woman was later identified, and it was confirmed that she was not Lauren. The police also searched Tull and Phil and Tear Houter after receiving a tip, but the search yielded no results. Another false lead came when a skull was discovered in a remote area of Indiana. The family anxiously awaited news, hoping for closure. However, the remains were identified as belonging to an animal. The Spear family's anguish only deepened, and they continued to struggle with the uncertainty of Lauren's fate. Despite the setbacks, the family refused to give up their search. They continued to work with private investigators, held prayer vigils and raised awareness about Lauren's disappearance through the media. They hoped that someone would come forward with new information that could bring their daughter and friend home. As the weeks turned into months, the family was forced to face the reality that Lauren might never be found alive. They knew that the longer she was missing, the less likely it was that she would return home safely. Nevertheless, they remained hopeful and steadfast in their determination to find out what happened to her. The Spear family is struggled to cope with the ongoing investigation. False leads and disappointments was a testament to their love for Lauren. Despite the unimaginable pain, they remained resilient and committed to finding the truth. The search for Lauren continued, and the family held out hope that one day they would find the answers they so desperately sought. The days turn into weeks, and the weeks turn into months. Despite the tireless efforts of the police and Lauren's family, there are no new leads in the case. The community of Bloomington remains on edge, with many feeling uneasy about what happened to the popular student. Lauren's family is left to grapple with their grief and the lack of closure. Her parents, Charlene and Rob, speak out often in the media, expressing their desperation for answers. They continue to put up flyers and search for any information that could lead to Lauren's whereabouts. The community rallies around them, holding vigils and fundraisers to support the family. But the passage of time only makes the pain worse, and the unanswered questions linger like a weight on their hearts. As the years go by, false leads and disappointments continue to surface. In 2013, the police receive a tip that Lauren's body is buried in a pock in Martinsville, Indiana. A search is conducted, but nothing is found. In 2017, the case is reopened, and new evidence is tested, but it doesn't provide any answers. Despite the setbacks, Charlene and Rob continue to hold on to hope. They cling to the belief that someday, somehow, they will find out what happened to their daughter. In the meantime, they honor her memory through the Lauren Spirit Charitable Foundation, which provides scholarships to students pursuing careers in fashion. 
The story of Lawrence B. Ray's disappearance remains a haunting mystery in the city of Bloomington. The case is still open, and the police continue to receive tips and information from the public. The community remains vigilant, keeping Lauren's memory alive and searching for the answers that have eluded them for so long.